Hello there. Let's uh, talk about how to identify tags for I.O. data. Uh, from previous video, uh, I show you that uh, when you create the project file, uh, one thing you can do is to configure the I.O., right? So when you add I.O. module underneath the uh, I.O. configuration folder, the software Right. So the Studio 5000 or Lars Logic 5000 automatically generate the tag on the controller tag uh, level. Right. Notice that's different because also uh, in the program, you can also have a program tag, right, which is local. OK, so um, after the software uh, create the tag, you can access the input output information, right? So that's why it says presented as a set of tags. And each tag use a structure, all right? So the structure, that means because the tag is automatically created by the software, so it must follow a specific pattern, right? It's software generated, right? So. This structure LN means the pattern of the name. Right? And this name depends on the specific features of the IO module. Right? Uh, later on uh, on the demo, I'm going to show you uh, specific features. Uh, could means that imp uh, this module is input or output. It's digital or analog. And also uh, the other advanced features uh, uh, that's really make the module like a like a smart smart module, right? So you can get actual informations on that. I'm going to demonstrate on that with Studio Five Thousand. Also, the name of the tag is based on the location right, uh, of the I/O module. So the lo location that means if it's local or remote. Right. Uh, I'm also, I'm going to demonstrate on that. And the other thing is that the location could mean on the, which slot. Remember, we talk about the modular PLC, right? So the module could be on different slot, right? So um, let's look at the structure, right? So over here, you will see in a format. This is the structure or the pattern I just talked about. Right? It start with a uh, item to indicate the location and followed by a column, right? And after that, it's the slot number, right? Remember, we talk about slot, slot number, and type member as such, such, right? Remember the last two, they said that's from their uh, Rockwell menu. Uh, those are optional. It doesn't necessary to have them all the time, right? So let's look at a location. So with location, you can have two type. So if you have a local chassis, the same chassis, same uh, backplane uh, with the controller. So that means it's local. It's the same uh, backplane on the PLC controller. Or you can you can have a remote I/O. Remote I/O that means this module doesn't uh, in, doesn't um, it, it's not installed on the same chassis or same backplane as the PLC controller is somewhere else, right? Uh, most uh, popular one will be Ethernet, Ethernet I.O. So that means this particular I.O. module is connected to the PLC through Ethernet, not on the local, right? So after that is the slot and type. With type, you can see here, I represent input, O represent output, C, you could represent that the configuration, or you can also have status included in the in the tag as actual information. So over here, I list some of the examples. You can see here, this one, this particular tag represent it's on the local column two. That means on the slot number two, right? I is input, right? Type, and then. The data actually is less member, right? And then dot zero. So that means it's particular channel, the first channel of this input module. Then you could have two, uh, you could have the remote IO. When you have a remote IO, those name actually is from the 
uh, adapter, right? So they call it adapter or bridge. So whatever you name those modules, those module name will be reflected on the tag name, right? So that name is depend on how do you name the module. And then after that, follow the same pattern. Slot number three, slot number five, right? Input, output, uh, channel one, channel two, right? So that's just a examples uh, from the IO, right? Uh, let's just go on to next uh, demonstration, all right? So with demonstration, uh, yeah, it just uh, reminded to you and also reminded to me, all right? So that's just started on the Studio 5000. Okay, so over here, uh, I have this uh, controller uh, project file created. I choose a particular uh, PLC controller with this one, you can have uh, both uh, local and remote, right? And also this controller is uh, one of our uh, project card in the lab. Uh, maybe I should show you on here, right? Okay, let me get that one, that's here. Remember, uh, I already show you the, uh, the structure of this, that's on the local, right? Then let's look at here. Uh, let me zoom in. Let's look at the second one, uh, which is the remote, right? Remote chassis, Ethernet adapter. Then let's look at from Ars links. How how do we what do we see on, on this system? So with this system, you can see here. Um, those are the. Uh, uh, motion software controller, right? So you don't need to worry about that. You can see here. So with this one, with this IP address, you have a Ethernet adapter. So from this Ethernet adapter, you can connect to the local I.O. Uh, uh, sorry, so, uh, to the remote I.O. Right? Uh, for the particular details, uh, we will uh, talk about, discuss that within the, the project. So if we have a course project, we can work on that. But I just want to use this one as a demonstration, all right? And this is a remote I.O. on here. This one is 103, this IP address. And then you can see here, there's a backplane. So that's the local I.O., so local chassis. We can create the I.O. module based on here, all right? So that's what, I'm going to simulate with the file uh, I just opened up, right? Okay, let me go back to here. Okay, so over here, uh, this is the IO configuration. Maybe we, I can, yeah, zoom in a little bit that you see what's happening in here. All right, so this backplane, that means it's the local, right? So if I right click uh, new module, right? I can choose, uh, let me see. Uh, digital, choose this category. Uh, let's just say here, right? This one you can see here, IB16. 16, so that's digital, right? And uh, uh, DC input, right? So if I just, if I just uh, create this, so I'll just uh, accept the default. Okay, so you can see here, Right. So we have a module created. I represent input binary digital, right? 16 channel, right? So this is the module uh, we create. Then we can go to the controller level. You can see right here, right? You have this local, right? Remember that uh, uh, we look at the pattern, right? So if you, uh, uh, you have local module, right? So you then you have the local, uh, represent on that on slot number one input right so this is i is input the, then you have another one called c 
Remember C represent configure, right? So let's look at here. So if you look at this, look at inside, you can see here, that's what I mean, smart module, right? So you can have actual information on this, right? So we don't we don't need to go into detail with this video on the those information, but over here you can see here, right? PT point point zero zero start from there go to point fifteen altogether sixteen channel, so that's that's each each individual connecting point to the digital to the input. Then if you look at the C, you wonder what's look at that's inside C. That's configuration, right? So we can see here, right? There's a filter. So like for example, you have the signal, uh, have a have a a signal bounce, right? So the it flashing very quickly. Maybe you want to apply certain time filter on that signal. You can specify on here, right? So this is just the extra uh, specific features. But the data, the actual input output, will be reflect on here, All right? So this is uh, what we see on here. Uh, for example, if I find out, okay, this module I made a mistake, it's not on slot number one, right? So let me make this window bigger. So you can see here on slot, right? So if uh, I think, okay, that's a slot, that's a wrong one, it's a slot three. So I can change here, change to slot three. Oh, not this one, all right. Uh, let me see here, the window is small. Yeah, that's okay here. So I can click okay to change it. Now you can see here, this, this, um, tag name automatically changes from local column one to local column three. So that is what I mean, right? So the location also change the tag name. Then let's look at the remote, right? Uh, over here, there's an ethernet, right? So if we have a remote IO, we need to create a, uh, the, a scanner, right? For this type, we can choose 1734, uh, again, low, uh, the details we can uh, look at that uh, when we talk about the uh, the course project, right? So over here, I just want to quickly show how do you configure. So this will be the you can see here Ethernet adapter. So it's that e Ethernet network communication module. So when you create this module, it will ask you name. Remember, this name will reflect on the tag, right? So I just make uh, very uh, uh, specific name, right? So you can recognize, I'll use my initial MZ, right? And then underscore, uh, I'll use uh, APT adapter or something like that, right? So you can get, actually, you can give any legal name, right? So over here, you need to specify because it's on the Ethernet 192, you need to specify uh, the uh, IP address, sorry. So, just assume right 103. So after that, you click OK. Then over here, not only you have this module created, you can see here, you also have this adapter. Remember the my initials, right? MZ, right? So that created automatically by the system. Then you have data, but this data is only for that uh, uh, adapter. Right, and if you have more modules to uh, connect to the adapter, you have to change because right now you only specify. Uh, let me see here. You only, I think, you only specify one chassis size. You only specify one slot, right? So then, uh, if you want to add more, you need to add. So that's for example, two slots, right? So over here and just confirm that and click OK. So that changed to two slots, right? Then you can add new module on here.
with this new module, we just use a random uh, module. Just want to show you that 34. So with 1734, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find a, uh, it's better to have a analog something. I can sh so I can show you, right? You can see here to channel input, and let's try output. Do you, I'm trying to find the analog output. And a lot, yeah, let's see here. Let's just say this. If we have a two channel analog voltage output, right? So create. So uh, this one we can call uh, uh, analog uh, out. Right, just gave a name, right? Any legal name will do. So you, of course you need to find the those information match on that. Again, those are the details. I, I, right now I just want to show you here. Yeah, you can see whenever you create modules here, it automatically generate the controller tag, right? Again, I want to you know that this is controller tag, right? You could have the here program tag, which is local, right? Local is not shared by all the program. So that's why IO tag need to be at controller level. So this is one thing uh, I want you to see that because the location, right, you could have local or you could have a remote. And also because the specific features on the module, you could have input down here, you, or you could have the output. Right, so that on here, analog output. So with this one, you can see on this data, if you open the, the folder on here, right? So channel zero, channel one data. And also you notice here, that's integer. So that means it's analog, it's not a binary or Boolean, either zero or one, that's digital, right? So you can see that uh, tag really match up with the uh, modules specific features and the locations all right so this is what I want uh, I want to show you all right so uh, see you on the on the next video